Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to another StarCraft 2 cast for the LPS last player standing StarCraft 2 open number 2. My name is Cope, once we're going to be watching a round of 16 game between RGM Perfect, that being Rain Perfect, spawning as the green Protoss in the bottom left hand corner, and Sky Zero spawning as the teal Terran in the top right hand corner. Uh, round of 16 action, this is game 1 between these two players of these of this uh, best of 3 I do believe. So we'll see exactly, uh, we'll see exactly how this turns out. Map is GSL Crevasse. I'm sure uh, seems to be a staple map in this uh, this tournament as it is right now. So we're into round of 16 action now, guys. Round of 32 uh, vods should be up, or, or are currently uploading as I speak. So you should be able to enjoy those. Uh, again, check them out at uh, lastplayerstanding.com because they've been able to run a great tournament so far. And uh, looking forward to seeing anything uh, they might put out in the future in terms of tournaments and the like. So we've seen standard openings from both players so far. Uh, nothing too tricky. Both players might opt to go for that uh, this fast expansion up here. They are discussing exactly what uh, racial identity both players are. Sky Zero claims to be white as can be. So we do see, yeah, uh, again, metagame shift. Or not shift, but a metagame on this map. Seems to be to put that fast command center or that fast nexus up on that high ground. As an expansion is so easy to take. But we will see uh, exactly what route these players decide to go with. We're not sure as of yet. Uh, still a little bit of friendly banter in the game, nothing too major. Do see that gateway now going down as well as the barracks for the Terran player. Terex, uh, Terran player does drop the refinery as well. So we'll get started on some of that gas as the assimilator is started for the Protoss player. Both deciding to go with gas, which is actually a pretty telling telling sign. It means they're not going for a gasless fast expand. Uh, neither one might be deciding to drop that fast expander. If they do, it will be a little bit delayed uh, because of the gas. Most fast expansions that you do see are usually without gas, as you can get out uh, enough basic units to defend an expansion uh, with only minerals, while well, obviously only need minerals to build that command center. Orbital command is being morphed as a marine is trained by the Terran player, incredibly standard opening. You see Cybernax core now going down, and uh, yeah, neither player seems to be opting for that fast expansion. It's actually quite interesting uh, to note. I figured you might see at least one of them. Probably both of them go for it, but I guess you're not going to see that in this game. Second barracks now going down for Sky Zero as he prepares to put on maybe a little bit of aggression. He is rallying to the bottom of his ramp. So we'll see if that's a telling sign as to where he might be sending those offensive units later on uh, in the next couple of minutes, I guess I should say. Scouting now being done for Sky Zero, trying to figure out exactly where his opponent is. And I lied, of course, even with that gas taken, we do see the fast expansion down by Rain Perfect as he decides to drop that Nexus down on about 20 supply as he starts Warp Gate simultaneously. Obviously, that was the purpose behind the gas. Not fully saturated, but I'm sure there was an intent behind that. Uh, now he throws another probe in there just to make sure that he's mining as much gas as possible from that one assimilator. Terran player has not decided to drop any sort of a command center yet. We do see a reactor being made on that barracks, as well as the second barracks just finishing up and having a tech lab dropped on it. Uh, we still no command center though, so we might see uh, if Sky Zero doesn't manage to put any early pressure here, we might see that command or the uh, the expansion for Rain Perfect being the Nexus come into play in terms of an early economic advantage. Chrono boosting out that warp gate, obviously trying to get it out at some point. We'll see exactly uh, how he decides to follow this up with what number of gateways and uh, what number of tech structures in any other direction he might be deciding to go. So far nothing else quite telling has been dropped by Sky Zero outside of the fact that he has started concussive shells, not STEM. STEM has the longest research time out of all those things, so normally you want to start at first. But he's obviously aiming for some sort of a, uh, a marauder timing attack by the looks of it as he's trying to get the concussive shell out. Uh, still no marauders built though yet. He is uh, does finally have that first marauder pop out. As he is rallying down, where is he rallying exactly? Hmm. That's a good question. Looks like he's maybe just rallying to the middle of the map. Uh, looks like he's actually rallying to this group of marines. Of course, I was trying to find the rally point and I couldn't find it. So he's sending this group of marines down and rallying to them. Obviously, he's going to try and put on a little bit of fast pressure here. That probe is going to scout. These marines are moving out, though. And will give Rain Perfect enough time to maybe react. But he does have two more gateways on the way. Almost completed. Warp Gate is done. So we should be able to warp in some units and hopefully deal with this. Uh, with very little problem. So the uh, Terran, oh, the Terran has actually managed to pull a great number of SCVs. He has left very little mining. He's uh, preparing to do some sort of an all-in by the looks of it. He's pulling a ton of SCVs. Cast of Shell will finish at about the right time, so he'll be able to kite those zealots to no end. Uh, we do see only two sentries, three zealots, and a stalker here to deal with this one. This SCV pokes up the ramp to see what we're facing. And uh, here we go. This actually could be a game any confrontation. You see the SCVs are going to go up there to soak up some damage. Marauders are going to try and kite those zealots. Uh, Zealots are going to be forced to back up. Force field goes down, blocking off the SCVs from the rest of the units. As these units are still ranged, able to rain down damage, and the SCVs 
Uh, just managed to stay alive for the time being. More units warped in for rain. Perfect. So you see that they now go to work on destructible debris while they are force field as force field dies. And here they come. SUVs to try and soak up some of that damage while the Marines and Marauder do the damage from the back. Another gateway being dropped here in, in desperation by rain uh, as he is uh, having lots of pressure put on him right now. I don't know why the SUVs are attacking the Nexus, but they shouldn't be doing that. And uh, this force actually is looking quite intimidating, but it is getting pushed up to the expansion. Uh, his choice, obviously, with the warping comes down. Be able to warp in some zealots here and probably be able to take care of this little force quite easily. And there's the GG by Sky Zero. He tried some sort of a, uh, a marine marauder concussive shell STV all in, and it failed. So obviously that just resulted in him leaving the game. Uh, might have something to do with this barracks not being rallied. I don't know. It seems to be uh, a problem. He didn't have these units coming down the field as he was uh, had had the rally point set to one of those marines. Meaning that as soon as that marine died, those rally points were reset and uh, the units were no longer streaming down. So you see a quick uh, quick early win for Rain Perfect. We'll see if he can finish off the series in Game 2 or if Sky Zero can come back and try and take this to Game 3. This has been Copo Guys Casting for the LPS, Starcraft 2 Open Number 2. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the cast and I will see you guys later.